So in this I will be talking about the protein synthesis inhibitors. So before knowing about the protein synthesis inhibitors, we must know how the proteins are actually synthesized. So basically the protein synthesis is taking place in the ribosome. In the case of bacteria, there is a 30s ribosome as well as a 50s sub there are two subunit that is a 30s subunit as well as a 50s subunit then in the so actually for the synthesis of the proteins there are basically three sites so one is the a site another site is the p site and there is an e site so what is meant by this a site a site is the acceptor site the acceptor in the sense means when a new amino acid so when a new amino acid which is bind to trna which is bind to trna when it is coming it actually comes and bind to the a site because it is the acceptor now what is the p site p site is the peptidyl site so peptidyl site means if there is initially a three amino acid that is already formed and this is actually attached to a trna so the peptide chain this peptide chain it is already present in the p site that is that is why it is called peptidyl site then we are having an e site so e site means it is ejection site ejection site that means if the trna of the amino acid at the p site has finished its function then the trna is no longer in use so that trna will be ejected through the e site just remember remember that all the protein synthesis inhibitors drugs they are all bacteriostatic except aminoglycosid the aminoglycosid is bactericidal so bactericidal means it kills the bacteria so when this when the new amino acid come to the acceptor site then they will these two amino acid they will form a bond with the help of an enzyme that is called transpeptidase so in the presence of the transpeptidase the amino acid are actually formed here and here there is actually a free trna so so you can see that when a new amino acid that is arriving at the a site the older amino acid it breaks away from the p site and they are actually transferred they are actually transferred to the a site so the enzyme which transfer this peptide is called the transpeptidase so the trna that is now present at the p site so this trna it is actually transformed into the e site and that trna is ejected out so the peptide with the newly added amino acid so the peptide with this newly added amino acid it is actually then transferred into the p site and this process can be called as translocation so this process is called as a translocation now so what happens now is that the a site will be free and a new trna amino acid 
and a new tRNA with an amino acid is attaching to the actually the A site is now free and a new amino acid with the tRNA can attach here and this amino acid will be at P site so this cycle it goes on repeating until a desired length of a protein is achieved so this process of protein formation it can be blocked by protein synthesizing inhibitors to exert the antibacterial effect there is two antibiotic that is acting at the a site so one is the tetracycline and the aminoglycoside aminoglycoside so these two will act at the a site that means the tetracycline it binds to the a site and it block the tRNA with a new tRNA with amino acid from attaching to the A site. So that is the function of the tetracycline. And whereas this aminoglycoside, it will also go and bind to the A site, but here it actually causes misreading. So it actually causes misreading of the mRNA so that so that different amino acids are are found and there is actually the synthesis of toxic proteins and the protein due to synthesized due to the misreading is actually toxic that is why the protein synthesizing inhibitors is actually causing the bactericidal action that is it kills the bacteria bactericidal action so the drugs which are acting at the a site they are actually binding to the 30s ribosome that means the aminoglycoside and the tetracycline are acting on the 30s ribosome so then another mechanism we can inhibit the protein synthesis is by blocking the transpeptidase so we can use chloramphenicol chloramphenicol and pleuromutilin pleuromutilin so this go and inhibit this act on the transpeptidase then we can block the translocase so the antibiotic that can be used to block the translocation is macrolide macrolide linozolid linozolid streptogramin streptogramins and lincosamide linco samide so this lincosamide is also called as clindamycin so macrolide linozolide lincosamide that is otherwise called clindamycin and streptogramin they go and inhibit the translocation so if you want to remember where it is actually acting you can remember as at 30 at 30 means aminoglycoside and tetracycline are acting on the 30s ribosome whereas all other drugs in this which i have written it is acting on the 50s subunit so now looking on to the spectrum of this protein synthesis inhibitors so the wide spectrum protein synthesis inhibitors are chloramphenicol pleuromutilin and this tetracycline tetracyclines so these are actually wide spectrum wide spectrum 
the moderate spectrum include the amino glycoside and this macrolide so this is included in moderate spectrum so the rest of the drug that is the linozolid streptogramin lincosamide so they are included in the narrow spectrum so now discussing about the detail in detail about the tetracycline so we are having doxycycline which is the most used tetracycline oxy tetracycline chlor tetracycline minocycline and demiclocycline so about the minocycline a new actually a new class is designed based on the structure of the minocycline and that class of drug is called glycyl cycline glycyl cycline so in the class of glycyl cycline we have actually designed a drug and that drug is called tg cycline so tg cycline it is a glycyl cycline and it is having a similar structure to the minocycline so broadly saying the mechanism of action of the tetracycline is to block the a site and one more thing i have to say here is that generally the mechanism of resistance of tetracycline so the most common mechanism of resistance is the drug efflux so this is the most common mechanism that is a drug efflux there are also other mechanisms that is by increase the production of drug inactivating enzymes so certain enzymes are synthesized that can inactivate the drugs and you can also synthesize certain proteins that cause that can protect the ribosomes that is ribosomal protective protein ribosomal protective protein but if you want to remember one you have to remember the drug efflux because it is a most common mechanism so about the route of administration of tetracycline everyone have heard about the doxycycline so the route of administration is oral and the oral bioavailability it is maximum with this minocycline greater than actually the oral bioavailability is maximum and uh, minocycline is greater than doxycycline so we can also give the tetracycline intravenously we can give but intramuscularly it is not given we never give we will never give it by intramuscular route because it actually causes there will be severe pain and there will be inflammation inflammation if you are taking through intramuscular route so about the drugs actually the doxycycline it is the most used currently whereas other drugs such as tetracycline chlor tetracycline so they all are actually not used due to development of not used due to development of resistance so about the spectrum of action so it is 
active against the gram positive as well as the gram negative organisms but there are certain gram negative bacteria where you can not use tetracyclines so that is three gram negative bacteria which are starting with the letter p pseudomonas the proteus providentia providentia then enterobacter enterobacter as well as acinetobacter acinetobacter so this is the five gram negative organisms that are resistant so now talking about the uses of the doxycycline so in you can see that the doxycycline it is a drug of choice which i have written in the yellow color so it is actually the drug of choice at first in the chlamydia so the chlamydia which is causing a sexually transmitted disease if the chlamydia it is causing pneumonia then the drug of choice for the chlamydia that is causing pneumonia is azithromycin then so chlamydia then the rickettsia especially the scrub typhus you can use doxycycline as a drug of choice then the mycobacterium hominis mycobacterium hominis so this bacteria which causes the sexually transmitted disease if this bacteria is causing the mycobacteria is causing a pneumonia so if it is causing a pneumonia then the drug of choice in the case of pneumonia is azithromycin azithromycin then the doxycycline can be given as a drug of choice in the case of a gram negative bacteria that is the brucella then you can give for borrelia which is a spirochete in the case of plague prophylaxis then a pleurodesis and pericardiodesis so what is meant by this pleurodesis and pericardiodesis so these are actually injected so these are actually injected in the case of a recurrent if there is actually a recurrent pneumothorax if there is a recurrent pneumothorax and the pericardiodesis is injected if there is a case of cardiac tamponade if it is a case of cardiac tamponade so this is actually an irritant which causes inflammation and fibrosis and it leads to the obliteration of the spaces so when we are injecting into the pleural cavities pleural space or the pericardial space there is actually obliteration of the space so stating about the other uses which are not due to uh, which are not the drug of choice is this doxycycline it can be used in malaria filaria then you can use un syphilis in case of penicillin allergy in case of penicillin allergy and you can also used to treat anthrax so remember that all the tetracyclines are v2 receptor blocker that is vasopressin receptor blocker so you can use 
this demiclocycline in case of siad that is syndrome of inappropriate adh so the demiclocycline it is a most potent inhibitor of vasopressin then about the minocycline minocycline can be used in the asne as well as leprosy so in only tetracycline this is a only tetracycline that is used in the resistant leprosy so then we are having certain newer tetracyclines that is a saricycline or madacycline iravacycline saricycline is used in asne omadacycline can be used in pneumonia and skin infections iravacycline it is used in complicated abdominal infections so the next drug that is discussed here is tigecycline and this is a glycyl cycline which go and block the actually a site it go and block the a site same as tetracycline so the mechanism of resistance there is a mechanism of resistance that is by drug efflux and the actually resistance is rare so this drug it can tigecycline it can only be given through iv it is intravenously and it is having a poor concentration a poor concentration in urine and the blood so due to a poor concentration in the urine and the blood it is not used in the treatment if there is a urinary tract infections if there is a bacteremia a bacteremia and if there is meningitis meningitis so they are not used in the treatment of urinary tract infection bacteremia meningitis so now looking about the side effect of the tetracyclines so it can cause git side effects so the gi tract side effects include there can be nausea there can be vomiting and this nausea and vomiting is the most common then there can be esophagitis so to prevent this esophagitis the patient is asked to take the drug with a full glass of water and not to lie down for 30 minutes for 30 minutes the patient should not lie down ask the patient not to lie down and so a similar type of reaction the same advice can be given to the patient who is taking bis phosphonate bis phosphonate so then it can become hepatotoxic and this it can be toxic to the liver and it is actually more evident especially during the pregnancy then it can have the skin it can affect the skin it can actually causes photosensitivity that is so actually there is actually pigmentation so in the sun exposed area there is actually pigmentation and the patient is asked to cover the skin or he is asked to use an umbrella and use sunscreen while he is stepping out then it can affect the kidney and it is 
in kidney it can have two effects one it is direct nephrotoxic so it is directly nephrotoxic exception are seen with two drugs exception the doxycycline doxycycline and the tg cycline doxycycline and tg cycline this nephrotoxic action is not seen and there also can be a fancani syndrome and that is typically seen when you are taking an expired drug so what is fancani syndrome it is actually a damage to the pct and so if the ptc pct is damaged pct is unable to reabsorb the solute so there is actually salt wasting nephropathy so here there is a salt wasting nephropathy a salt wasting nephropathy in the kidney it can have one more effect that is it can block the v2 receptor that is a vasopressin receptor so that can lead to diabetes insipidus diabetes insipidus so the tetracycline it is having high affinity for calcium binding and due to the high affinity of calcium binding the bone growth can be abnormal as well as there will be a yellow discoloration of the teeth or the enamel one more toxicity is seen that is a vestibulo toxic vestibulo toxicity and this vestibulo toxicity is seen only with a it is seen only with a streptomycin streptomycin and a minocycline minocycline now about the contra indications of the tetracyclines so it cannot be given in pregnancy it is contra indicated in pregnancy and it is also contra indicated along with milk because the milk is containing the calcium and the calcium is getting chelated so that it won't be well absorbed 